Hi folks, Mr. Long here. We're going to do uh, some math with quadratics and specifically we're going to look at, um, at the vertex form of the quadratic and why it, uh, why it gives us the maximum or minimum. Um, so the goal here is to figure out what the vertex form is and why, it, wh why, does, why do parabolas have vertex? Why do quadratics create vertex? And what I want you to think about is, is there's something magical about, about squaring numbers. There's something that the squaring of a number does uh, that another, other operations don't do. So it's something special. There's a special operation. So here's a, let's start this with a really simple expression. And remember that you can pause, rewind. Uh, I do think you should have a calculator with you as we go through this. Um, it's probably good to be doing the calculations uh, while I'm going through this. So got a simple expression here, folks. 6 plus bracket squared equals some number. But I want to make that the least possible value. So what am I going to put in that bracket to make it as low as possible? The least possible uh, answer right here. What's the least that can ever be? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try some different numbers. So I'm going to try putting a negative into the brackets. So if I put a negative into the brackets, I've got 6 plus negative 2 squared. Well, according to bed mass, I have to do squaring first. So negative 2 squared is 4, so that becomes 6 plus 4, which becomes 10. So when I put a negative in, I get positive 10. So when I put a negative into this bracket, when I put a negative into that bracket, the altogether I get a larger value. So 6 and then that negative, oh, the negative turns into a positive. Okay, I get it. Um, let's try 2. So I tried negative 2, let's try positive 2. So I put a 2 in here. Well, now I've got a square 2. 2 squared, 2 times 2 is 4. So I've got 6 plus 4 again, which is also 10. That's interesting. So no matter if I put negative 2 in the bracket or positive 2, I get the same result. So the question is, why is that? Well, I think it goes back to the whole idea that a negative times a negative is a positive. The product of two negatives is positive. Okay, so how do I get a minimum? Well, let's try zero then. Um, and I'm going to have to move that over a little bit, aren't I, to see that. Uh, okay, so I'm right here now. I'm going to try the negative. So I'm over here. I'm going to try zero. So now I have, that happens to equal 6 plus 0 squared, which is just 6. Hmm. So it seems to me then that the lowest possible number, or the, sorry, the value I have to put in this bracket to make this all together the lowest possible number is 0, because the lowest, the least square is going to be 0 because a negative squared is a positive. Let's, let's write that down in the top right corner. A negative squared is a positive. A positive squared is a positive. But zero squared is zero. Ah, okay, so that's, that's really important. So for, to make a square the least it can possible be, it's the zero square. Okay, the zero square. So that means I have to put zero in there. And I do want you to look at that. So if I have six plus that bracket squared, what's the least value I can ever have? It's six, right? Because that only occurs when I have the zero square. So let's move down to here. What x value gives six plus x minus three squared a minimum value? Well, I need to make that bracket 0. How do I make that bracket 0? It's got to be x minus 3 equals 0 or x equals 3. Hmm, okay. The bracket has to be worth 0 and this means x equals 3. Oh, and how much is going to be left? If this is gone, if the 0 is gone, then I'm left with 6. I have 6 left over. Okay, so I have this squaring amount. The lowest that squaring amount can ever be is 0. 
Oh, and it occurs when x is negative 3. If I'm anything other than negative 3, this, if I have anything other than, sorry, not negative 3, but 3, this expression is going to be worth more than 6. Okay, if I think about that, if x is 3, this is worth 0, and then this whole expression is only worth 6. If I have any other number than 3 in there, this result, because of the squaring, is going to be positive. Okay, and 6 plus a positive is bigger than 6. And this, folks, is why we get vertex. Right, we get vertex here at 3 because it's the lowest square. It's the smallest square I can ever have. The smallest square I can have if I have x minus 3 is at 3. Okay, and that's when this portion disappears and is worth 0. This is just algebraic reasoning, folks. We're not memorizing a pattern or a, um, a rule that it shifts to the right if, if it's x minus 3. We just know that the smallest square is the 0 square. Okay, let's move on. So let's just go through some examples and see if we can, can understand what's happening. So if I have this expression, y equals x plus 4 squared plus 5, how do I make that, that y value right here the absolute lowest it can possibly be? Well, the only way that that's going to be its lowest value is to make this whole thing disappear, right? Because that this is always going to be 0 or positive. So how do I make x plus 4 worth 0? I think you folks know it's negative 4 gives a minimum value. So let's think about that. If x equals negative 4, then x plus 4 squared is worth 0. And all that is left over is, this is the kind of time where you probably should pause it and think about it. But if we go through this, x plus 4 squared is worth 0, right? Because x is negative 4. All that's left over is 5. All that's left over is 5. If x is negative 4, this part disappears, and I'm left with 5. So this means that the vertex of this equation right here has to be negative 4 and 5. Okay, so if I was to look at this, that would be 5, that would be negative 4, that would be vertex. And if I'm anything, if I'm any other value for x, then negative 4 is going to be increasing on both sides. And that's how we get that characteristic parabola. That's how we get that characteristic parabola. Okay, let's look at maximums. We looked at minimums. How do we generate maximums? So let's think about this. What value goes in the bracket to make the greatest value? So... What goes in right here? I've got 6 minus or take away this number squared. So how do I make this ex full expression as large as it can possibly be? Well, let's think about that. Um, this number here, what are, my, what are the possibilities for bracket squared? Bracket squared can be 0 or it can be positive. So the absolute maximum value that can ever be is 6, right? It has to be 6. Or sorry, which, what, what value goes in the bracket? Sorry, um, 0 goes in the bracket because 6 minus 0 squared is still 6. Oh, and yeah, what I wanted to share here with you is Usually we don't write quadratic equations like that, 6 minus x squared. We do negative x squared, right, plus 6. That's the way we write it, but it means the same thing. And in fact, as long as I keep the signs the same, I can bring this 6 to the front. So let's take a look at this one here. So if, if I look at this expression, I've got a 7 here. And then this value here, because of that negative out front, the x, this portion here, 
if I take just this portion, x minus 5 squared, x minus 5 and then squaring it will only create 0 or a positive. In turn, I multiply it by a negative. So I'm going to get the negative of 0 or the negative of a positive number. So what's the highest value I can generate ever out of there? Well, it's 7. The highest is 7. Otherwise, I'm taking away from 7, right? That's going to be negative. So the vertex is created when the bracket is worth 0. That's when it's going to be at its maximum. So in other words, when x equals 5, the y value at this location is obviously 7. The vertex is then 5, comma, 7. So, and just to sketch that off to the right, if I was at 5 for x and 7 for y, it would decrease on both sides, right? So that's the maximum value. The maximum is, or the optimum value, is y equals 7 for x equals 5. So let's, let's sort of summarize. So if I have this equation here, and we, by the way, we only used 1 uh, for a. And I'll just erase that. But, you know, it wouldn't have mattered if it was plus 1, minus 1, plus 6, minus 6. The whole, the big issue is whether a is positive or negative. But anyway, we see that in the, this form right here, x minus p squared plus q, we see the vertex is always at p and q, because notice I've got a minus p there. If a is a positive number, then the vertex is a minimum. If the a value is negative, the vertex is at a maximum. So if we looked at this, if a equals a positive, we've got this scenario. If a equals a negative, we then have this scenario. Right? It's frowning with a negative. So let's draw some rough sketches. So for the first one right here, that vertex is going to be at 4 and negative 1. In other words, I'm always asking the question, how do I make that 0? How do I make that 0? Well, to make that 0, x has to be worth 4. How much is left over if x equals 4? Then negative 1. And since this is positive here, it's positive 1 actually is the a value, it's going to always increase above negative 1. Okay, it's going to be, uh, if x is 4, that's 0, and this whole thing is gone, uh, and I'm at negative 1. But if I'm at any other number than 4, altogether, this is going to be above negative 1. So here's what the sketch looks like. There's negative 1 right here, and I'm at x equals 4 there. And then it's going to open up like that and smile. Okay, so... The minimum is at 4, comma, negative 1. Now let's look at this scenario right here. Look at the next one. In this case, I've got a negative out front, plus 7. So that means that altogether, this portion here, the x plus 4 squared is either 0 or it's positive. So altogether right here, this part is the negative of 0 or a positive, which is a negative number, or 0. So absolutely the maximum this expression all together can be is 7. So, and then where is the vertex? Well, the vertex is going to be at negative 4, because that's what makes this worth 0, comma 7. So to sketch that, I'd be at negative 4, positive 7, and I know that going both ways, it's going to decrease. My maximum occurs at an x value of negative 4, and when x is negative 4, that whole thing is gone, and all that's left is, is 7. Again, just algebraic reasoning, not graphical reasoning. Well, a bit of connections to graphical reasoning, but, you know, algebraic reasoning. So let's look at this one. So we know right away that's a negative, so it's frowning, it's opening down. Um, what makes that bracket worth 0? Well, it's 0. Oh, another way to think of this is y equals negative 2 y equals negative, negative 2 bracket x minus 0 squared plus 7. So if we were to sketch this one, the vertex is going to be at 0 and 7. So 
So up here at seven, and like so. You may hear a dog, by the way, folks, in the middle of this. I'm just um, letting my dog in, so. Sorry. Um, so here we go. Let's finish this off. Um, so I've got that sketch. I guess what's important there is I wanted you to see when um, when there is no um, no number in here with the x inside the brackets. The vertex is right on the y axis. Okay, the vertex is zero comma seven. And then in this last one here, if you notice, I could have written plus zero out there, right? Um, but I don't. So I just know for this one, the vertex is going to be at five and zero because, you know, there is, as I said, I can have a zero out there. There's nothing being added on. And in this case, A is a positive value, so it's going to be increasing. So right here, that's five right there, and then it's opening up, it's smiling. By the way, that is a perfect square. And what would the discriminant be for that? Hmm, I think the discriminant for that would be uh, zero because there's just it just touches once. Um, I'm going to go through and highlight what the discriminant is though on each one just to review. So the discriminant there would be zero because there's only one x-intercept. This one here, the discriminant is positive because there are two. Here, the discriminant is positive because there are two and the same with this one. Okay, two x-intercepts. Now what I would draw your attention to is right here. What would the discriminant be for this? y equals x minus 3 squared plus 4. Well, what's the lowest uh, this expression can be? The very lowest this expression right here can be. Well, I think the lowest it can ever be worth is plus 4. And then this is a positive here, so I'm adding on to 4. So in the least that this can be ever worth altogether, like in terms of squaring, is 0. So I could have 0 plus 4, or 1 plus 4, 2 plus 4, 3 plus 4, and so on. So the lowest it can ever get is 4, and then it goes higher and higher. Is that going to have any x-intercepts altogether? No, it can't. So the discriminant for that one would be negative. Okay, so now, folks, you know what vertex is. Um, and uh, at this point, um, what we're going to do is we can pause for a second, and then uh, we're going to go through uh, a process to figure out what the vertex is algebraically.